Call the July meeting of the U.S. District Board of Education to order. First, we'll have the election of board president and vice president. Accept nominations for president first. Mr. President, I will nominate Jack Fisher to be president. Second nomination. Then move and second. And Cassidy, I'm asking. <laughs> Any other nominations? It's been moved and seconded. Nomination sees. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Uh, nominations for vice president. I nominate Barb. Second. Move and second. Nomination sees. Any discussion? All in favor for Barb as Vice President? Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. So. Okay. Congratulations, Barb. Congratulations to you. Welcome to visitors. Good evening. <laughs> Additions and changes to the agenda. Uh, we need to add one item on the agenda for shared staff agreements uh, that would be under business items. Uh, section B, number 10. And that is all. Can I a motion to approve the agenda? Mr. President, I move to approve the agenda as amended. Move and second to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 6 0. Consent agenda. Uh, you have those on your uh, supporting documents. There's a lot of documents here on your, a lot of files there. Most of them have to do with budget. Um, so on your supporting documents would be pages 1 to 33. Um, the normal things, uh, bills and minutes. The budget report, you'll notice uh, there's some negative budget balances. Uh, that is due to reimbursements. An easy example is our, uh, our uh, bilingual education fund. We work with uh, the consortium at ESDAC to get some bilingual funds. We purchased some iPads and uh, that's reimbursed to us so we didn't budget for those so it increases the budget so it's, it shows as a negative balance on here but uh, it all it all figures out again so that's what that is uh, when you see those negative bu budget balances page 23 is our cash balances that we report to the state and uh, state law requires that i report that form to you all as well so that's why that's on the consent agenda the activity fund report, uh, things are in, in fine shape there. Page 26, uh, this will be, I really just put this on here so as kind of as a placeholder. This is this will be something that we add to the consent agenda uh, on a monthly basis. Any gifts or donations, the board should accept them. We haven't really made a practice of doing that, but this is how we'll, we'll go through that to make sure the board takes action to accept those. And then the remaining pages there are standard resolutions uh, for setting up for the school year. Okay, any other questions from Mr. Meyer? Or any questions in general? Mr. President, I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Move and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Any patron comments tonight? Okay. <coughs> Business <coughs> number one, organization. 
for the 2014-15 school year. <clears throat> Got a number of appointed positions there. Page 32. Uh, do I get to volunteer what I want to do? <laughs> sure. Okay. You got it all. I'll take um, the Goodman Scholarship and the uh, St. John Local Scholarship Committee. It's the first two that had blanks. Then you guys can fight over the rest. <laughs> first. I guess they, they two, two didn't want that. Huh? You can just have the rest of them. Yeah. Well, the one, the one said it had to change each year. Oh. Uh, okay. So Stan wants on my both are here. Did. did both of them say yeah, that? Yeah. That's why. I've never done either one of those. What was the second one, Stan? The did first two. The yeah, first, first two. two on the list, sir. Okay. Yeah, now you guys fight over the rest. I'll stay on the library board. What's the neighborhood revitalization planning committee do? Um, there's not been a meeting since I've been here. Um, if some if somebody applies for um, you know tax waivers, uh, that's not the right word. Uh, rebates for oh, you know, this improving, is okay. improving their. Their property. Or building a home. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a board that's uh, kind of one makes those decisions. The board should have a say in that since we're a taxing entity. So, which one is the hardest since Tom's not here? You know, <laughs> you know I'd say the PVC. The PVC <laughs> is not that hard, but it would be nice not having to come down here for. 25 minutes and then head back home again. Be nice if it was somebody local. Since Tom just lives right across the street, mm -hmm. it really isn't. I mean, all they do is just go through the points and things like that. So it's not a hard committee. Are, are I just say, think driving that? all the way down here for 25 I minutes. Think we have a that. consensus that Tom is doing that. Okay. Not that I don't like you guys, the teachers <laughs> and the principals. And, Mr. Meyer? I don't hear any SCK. <laughs> don't you oh, have tears. to do that? I don't have to. Oh, I thought the president had to be on there. Yeah. It's quality time with the superintendent. Yeah, yeah. It's quality. <laughs> yeah. But you see, it says others. others. Well, that meant <laughs> that al alternates when people. you can't come. <laughs> <laughs> I will go as an alternate. Okay. Um, board representative of our neighborhood revitalization plan committee. Well, since Tom's got one, I guess I can take his spot there. Carl? Good. Thanks. I said they didn't meet. Okay. <laughs> they have a job. Yeah, I need another one on the library. They want to keep Tom. Said I Anyone else on. interested in the library? Uh, I can. When could they be? It's in 25 minutes. We met 30, 30 times this year. Did you? 30 times. No, wow. Like, <laughs> what they got to talk about? Barb, you want to do that? I'll, I can do that one, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Phil, what have you got? You're awful quiet over there. Yeah, I don't want to stick away. <laughs> you can do the Cornwall Scholarship. That was, yeah. And I missed it this year. That's fine. Oh, no, you did? No. Yes. Yeah, I did it. Bill? It's Cornwall. interesting to do it. Yeah. It was one evening. Hard to do. Hard work. Okay. Bill? Now, I just realized that June is Let's going to be see. all confused now that it's Bill and not Barb. So well, actually, it's the. Um, her attorney or whatever. Well, but she calls. Um, oh, she's yeah. the one who calls. Um, if someone hasn't shown up. Yeah. If I can bring her in. Right. Yeah, I think so. Mr. Meyer, my computer crashed. Oh, no. <gasps> I'm, it 
is kind of like a safer contract. Okay. Yeah. That is one that we need. We need to pick a. Um, <coughs> So we've got one left here. Government mm -hmm. yeah, relations. Really, the only thing that goes on with that it would be at the KSB conference in uh, December. So if somebody's maybe interested in doing that, what do they nothing has been done. We get a vote on the. Uh, um, did you know last year? No. no, it's a kid's good gig to have. Yeah, you don't do nothing. Yeah. Okay. Phil? You know, well, done before. Yeah. Well, done before. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Who? Does anyone interested in the government relations position? They wouldn't want me on there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll just take it. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm sorry. Who was that? Okay, we have all the positions filled. Correct? Mm -hmm. All right, it's all the fighting over. Do you need to go through them again? No. Not until it decides to wake back up again. If it does. Oh. Mm -hmm. You guys can go on ahead. Okay. Work in my notes here. You're taking a motion to approve the appointments. I make a motion that we approve the appointments. Second. You have seconded. Bank is on here too. Oh. The bank is along the bottom too. I just want to bring that up. Right. The uh, official depository of funds down there, SGM Bank of Kansas, will be approving that. So we're going to abstain from the vote. My affiliation there. So it's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the list of appointments and designations as presented and amended. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0 with me abstaining. All right. Establishing petty cash limits. Um, with our credit cards now, you know, the petty cash is really just designed to, uh, so we can spend the money, you know, if we need to purchase something, we have some money readily available. With our credit cards, uh, that usually affords us the opportunity to purchase something we need to, without going through the regular procurement process. Um, so we, we were at $1,500 for each for the activity fund and for the district petty cash. Last year we went down to 750. We just don't need that much. So to reduce our risk a little bit there, I recommend we put those at 300 for district and for the activity account. Is that enough for if you're hosting sub-state tickets? Or this is different. Dollars? This is different. Oh. So okay. yeah, we can we can write a check out of our activity fund for a cash box, you know, if we need eight hundred dollars for a turn hit this no, night. When, when you're sitting yeah. there, you're, yeah. you're getting three hundred ones throughout yeah. the night. Yeah. 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 Right. That's Our cool. petty cash is different than all of the cash we keep on hand. So like we okay. we would have right. a cash box for ball games and things like that that's separate from petty cash. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that doesn't affect what we're doing there. Okay. Mr. President, I move the board approve the petty cash limits to be set at three hundred dollars. Second the motion. Moved and seconded. Set the petty cash limit at three hundred dollars. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries six. So, bank designation. Um, we do keep funds at, at both banks in town, uh, so this motion would would set that uh, in place and give give us authority to keep money at both places. So I recommend we designate American State Bank and SJ and Bank of Kansas as depositors.
I move that we um, oh, uh, designate the American State Bank and the SJ Bank of whatever, SJN Bank of Six. <laughs> 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 All right, <laughs> was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second. 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 to designate Second. State Bank and SJ and Bank of Kansas as Second. for Second. 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 Motion really got to you. I know. It's, it's <laughs> I need to pay attention on the chance. It's still quiet. Yeah, so good. <laughs> I'm trying to quit. It's my fifth day without one. That's the problem. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ratify lease purchase agreement. Um, we've seen this multiple times the uh, lease purchase agreement. We've uh, tweaked some things with attorney recommendations. Uh, such a high dollar uh, that we're dealing with. Uh, he recommended that uh, the board go ahead and officially ratify that, even though the board already gave me authority to sign off on that agreement. Uh, he has included his uh, findings and observations on page 46 and 47. Uh, this is all part of the lease purchase agreement. Uh, so nothing out of the ordinary there stating that we have the authority to do it and uh, things look okay. So. Okay. Everybody got a chance to read that? The offer was fantastic. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I move the board approve the lease purchase agreement. Second. 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 Move and second to approve the lease purchase agreement as presented. Is there any discussion? All <coughs> aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Six zero. engagement letters. Um, our, our new firm, uh, Von Felt Bauer and Von Felt out of Larned, uh, they have presented their engagement letters for our audit. Uh, just kind of a formality, but uh, it is important that we, both the board does their due process with what they're agreeing to uh, because it is the board's auditor, not, not the superintendent or the clerk. So. We work closely with them. There's two letters there. Uh, one is for some uh, you know, consulting and uh, non-audit related things. They help us out with our budget, we call them. Uh, we haven't paid them a dime and they've been very helpful uh, already. So um, the second one there is a uh, four page, five page deal that covers the audit, what exactly they're doing. So. Mr. President, I move the board approve the audit mm -hmm. engagement letters as presented. Second. Move second to approve the engagement letters as presented. Is there any discussion? Are all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. A resolution to expend contingency reserve funds. Uh, we need to spend a little bit of our contingency reserve money. Uh, to keep other funds, uh, their cash balance, where they need to be. Uh, that's our, our highest cash balance fund uh, other than capital outlay now. Uh, so we need to have a, a motion to do that. I'll explain some of the, the other, other budget things. Uh, and what all goes into this here on the next uh, two items. But this would be resolution number uh, 2015-12. Uh, the next one will actually be a different number. We had to change some things. So, if we could get a motion to approve using contingency reserve funds for uh, salary costs in June. Second. 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 Second.
That's kind of what you were talking about, <coughs> wasn't it? Mm -hmm. For 20? Yeah, and actually more like 30. Yeah, nothing unexpected here. You thought it was going to be 30 and it ended up being just 20? Is well, actually, our saying? total cash balance has gone down by 30. I see. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll need to use all of that out of the contingency reserve fund. I move the board approve the use of the contingency reserve fund to pay $20,000 in salary costs for the month of June. Second. And then second to approve the use of contingency reserve funds to pay $20,000 in salary costs for the month of June. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Oh. Resolution for 33% local option budget. Um, these next two items, we need to discuss uh, everything that goes into this uh, before we uh, make that motion for number seven. Uh, recall that with our recent election, uh, that gives the board authority, uh, continuing authority to put the LOB at 31% of the general fund rather than 30% what it had been. Uh, this one year, the board can go to 33%, and uh, my recommendation on our budget is that we do that. We would need to pass a resolution to do that. This resolution would be 2015-13 instead of 12 like it's listed here. Um, it's on page 58. <clears throat> it's only a one-year deal according to state statute. Uh, we cannot, uh, you know, the last sentence there is this resolution will expire uh, at the end of this fiscal year. So it's only a, a one year. <coughs> I've got information here on the budget I'd like to present to you. <coughs> and at any time, you feel free to stop me ask questions that you have them. Uh, first thing is our cash balances. Uh, looking at our preliminary numbers, when we have our audit, they come in and, and shuffle some things around. Uh, sometimes they disagree on an expense that we've made, perhaps out of capital outlay that we, we're not allowed to do, so we'd have to move that expense back somewhere else. So sometimes there's some things that, that are shifted around. Uh, so these numbers are preliminary because of that. So they become final after our, our audit. Our July 1 cash balances for the past five years, we have spendable cash balance in total. Spendable would be um, what we can use to pay operational expenditures, salaries, uh, utilities, purchase of classroom materials, those things. Uh, so you can see what our spendable cash balance has done. Uh, this down here shows the change each year from the previous year to the next. How much we've dropped. Okay, this isn't a news flash. We've all we've been talking about it since uh, uh, since my tenure here. I know that. So uh, our total cash balance would include things like our local option budget. Uh, sometimes there's cash left over there that we can't spend because we we're only legally allowed to spend up to our budget. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, this includes capital outlay money. The spendable cash balance doesn't. Our bond and interest fund, uh, federal funds, sometimes we have cash left over at the end of the year. It's really already been spent. It just, as of July 1, we hadn't spent it. Uh, so you see a huge drop on this last year here. That is all due to our bond payment. We paid off the bond this year. We had accumulated cash in there. Uh, we had one last payment. We didn't levy any taxes for last year. So with that bond, the way that those are set up, we carry over a year's worth of payment. So for the last 10 years, we've been carrying over a year's worth of payment. So we have that left at the end of the year. Uh, at the end of the, the term, use that cash to pay it off. So that's the big drop there. That's not concerning at all. That was fully expected. Now, why do we need this cash in here? Well, we need it to start out the year for one. Uh, for example, in our food service fund, we have to have money to start. Start paying salaries, start paying for groceries before we get the year going. Uh, 
we we don't get a big state aid check or a tax check until later in the year. So we have to be able to, to get through those times where we don't have funds coming in. Also, we need to have some cash available so we can weather any downturn. You know, if the state in the middle of the year says, uh, we're going we're gonna to cut your state aid a lot. Now what do we do? Well, if we don't have any cushion there, we have to make cuts immediately. If we have a little cushion there, that may give us a year to make the best decision we can. So there needs to be some cash available, some cushion available. Uh, I'm going to stop this uh, and look at page 59 and 60 on your supporting documents. This will kind of show you what the, <clears throat> what the spendable funds are. We can use those monies for just about anything. <coughs> and this is from last year to this year how, how that changed. So about $29,000 is what we spent more than we took in. Including capital outlay, this is what happened. Now we increased our capital outlay budget quite a bit. A lot of that is already spent. So it's there. It shows we increased cash balance, but uh, with our the additions on our, our improvements with the the plumbing, the HVAC, and the, in the office, you know, a good chunk of that is spent. Also, we had planned on purchasing a short bus, and thought it was best that we not do that right now. So that's another uh, another issue there. Why why that went up? So these funds are all money we can't spend. The LOB supplemental general. Uh, if we collect excess taxes. All that does is go to reduce our mill levy for the next year. And we can't spend it now. Uh, recreation, if we carry any money over there, it's not ours to spend. That's the Recreation Commission. Our uh, federal funds, the library, we can kind of include that in spendable cash balance. But, uh, activity fund, most of this uh, money, it, it's just ticket money in and uh, paying officials out. And then again, our bond and interest fund. So that's how those funds are kind of split out. Now capital outlay, we may be able to include that a little more in our spendable cash balance with some of the things that have changed. Um, this is something I gave to you a few times during the year. Um, a lot of numbers here, but I update this when I know more. When we get our enrollment numbers, I update it. When uh, they come in for the audit, I update it. When they give us our final numbers, I update it. So this was after our, uh, um, after our enrollment audit, and really all those numbers are comparing last year to this, uh, the previous year to this past year. We knew these additional costs were coming. And this doesn't include things like increased grocery costs or natural gas prices or you know, fuel at the pump, those things. Just the, the big ticket items that we knew were going to be more expensive. And then our, our savings or additional revenue that we have. Uh, so that difference is uh, about $28,000. Now over the past few years, I, we knew we had been overspending by about $55,000. We've been spending more than we were taking in. That's it was kind of the average. So that difference is about $27,000 right there. So that we expected that to happen, that $29,000. On the previous page, we kind of expected that. Now, something to keep in mind too: some of that is we're we're trying to work ahead on some of our bills. We have some bills like our KASB dues that come due in the summer, uh, student accident insurance. So we have the choice: do we pay them in before July one or after July one? So some of those we're trying to get ahead and pay them before July 1. So a few of those we paid double in last budget year. So some of that contributed to that, that we'll see that pay off down the road. So the more that we can do, the better off we'll be. Any questions about those things real quick? So then you see a graphic of what's happened to our total cash balance. Again, 
The largest drop here is due to our bond payoff. That's not a concern at all. Um, this downward trend is still a concern uh, with our spendable cash balance. Um, I think this balance needs to be higher than what it is now. I've got recommendations. We've discussed those. One thing we do need to be careful of is we can't be too high. Um, there's been discussions with the legislature about sweeping cash balances. You just take that money out of our funds, put it in the general fund, and then that reduces what the state has to pay us. So um, that was uh, very close to getting out of committee last year, uh, which is a little, a little scary. I'm not sure how deep that goes, if it can come into our capital outlay fund, which is all local dollars or not. So, uh, so some of that we need to be careful. We don't want that too high at all. Uh, we all always want to be spending that money on educating kids, not sitting in the bank. Sorry. All <laughs> for yeah. I'm just kidding. So our budget for this year, the recommendations. Uh, keep in mind on our budget, this is the, the district's authority to spend money. If we don't budget it, we can't spend it. Of course, if we don't have it, we can't spend it. But if we don't budget, we don't have the authority to spend it. Uh, it kind of shows us uh, what we can expect to get from the state and from uh, local tax dollars. Uh, we, we fix the working budget or establish that working budget after we get this all finalized. And we've been working on that for several months and uh, what we use internally. Uh, so we'll finalize all of that uh, here after the budget is finalized. And then our actual budget amounts Really, the final numbers don't even come in until June. So we don't know exactly where we're going to finish until the year's almost over. And we have a pretty good idea when the audit comes and, and uh, you know, when we count the enrollment and when the audit is done. So some things to keep in mind about our budget. Uh, one thing that affects our, our tax rate a lot is valuation, the property valuation in our district. Uh, valuation is up. Higher valuation means lower mill levy. And you can collect more dollars with one mill if the valuation is higher. And then the opposite of that is true. Uh, for this year, real estate values have increased. Oil and gas was pretty stable, uh, down a little bit. So most of that increase was from real estate values. Uh, so it also shows who pays more of this share. You know, for oil and gas, valuation goes up quite a bit, then other property owners are going to pay more, uh, more share comparatively. So that's what makes our valuation and our mill levy sometimes swing quite a bit, makes it fairly volatile. Our mill levy, uh, you have the, the budget in front of you, it's also on your, uh, on your, uh, your iPads. The one that's on the supporting documents is not the correct one. I sent you an updated one, but that is on your files. If you go to the documents, it's there where you have that paper copy there. Actually, I'll just, I'll just pull it up here. It's this one. This is budget draft updated. This is what would be published in the paper if the board would accept these recommendations. Uh, this is what we're looking at, the proposed budget. And we have our taxes levied and all of our expenditures. So I'm going to continue on with this and we'll come back to that if we're there. We'll come back and look at that. So our mill levy, we have we have three funds that we have a tax levy for. The general fund, the local option budget, which is supplemental general, and then the capital outlay fund. 20 mills is established for the general fund by state law. Uh, we set the others. And keep in mind, we budget dollars. Uh, if you notice the mills, maybe in other years, is adjusted a little bit because the valuation and things are finalized. So we, we have a target of mills, but we're budgeting dollars. 
Uh, one mill generates about $43,000 in, uh, in tax revenue. Our mill levy history, last year, the previous year, and then recommended for this year. <clears throat> Shows you the mill levies that are presented to you on that, on that page. Uh, the LOB would be 21.7 capital outlay dropped to six and a half, and then nothing on bonding interest again. So our total is up about seven tenths of a mil. Um, our mill levy in 13 14, comparing to the state, was 89th lowest out of 286 districts. So that's the 31st percentile. So we're in the lower third as far as mill levy. Uh, in the state, give you an idea. Uh, this mill levy changing to this, I don't know where we would rank, but based on last year's numbers, it would be very similar. Uh, up right at the lowest third. Our mill levy, here's what that's done past seven years. So we're up a little from last year. Still lower than the other years uh, prior to that. Uh, we can't just consider the mill levy. We have to look at dollars because um, that's really what it what matters to to us as taxpayers uh, is the dollars. Uh, you can see wild swings in the amount of tax dollars that have been levied. Uh, I don't know the answer, but I, my guess is a lot of that has to do with valuation. Uh, if you look at the graphs, well, I do know that's that's the big part of it. If you look at the graphs, then they just crisscross. Valuation goes up and already comes down. Um, our tax dollars is roughly equal to what we had two years ago. Um, it's hard to kind of see what's, how do you average that out? We go down 11, up 11, up 4, up 10, down 4, up 4. If we would start here, and these dollars would go up by the same percentage each year and get to here, that would be about 2.1% each year. Start here, forget about these numbers, end here. It's about 2.1% per year which is not, uh, not astronomical by any means. Very close to inflation. Our general fund, again, is 20 mills for all districts in the state. Uh, the general fund, we set that with our enrollment numbers. We count heads and then we have weightings for students in vocational programs, students who get on a bus, students that are uh, at risk of failing, living in poverty, some of those things. So it's a complicated system, but it is based on what it actually costs to educate kids. A kid who gets on a bus is more expensive to educate a kid than a kid that walks to school. A kid that's, uh, that comes from poverty is typically more expensive to educate than, than uh, the ones that don't. Uh, so. Again, not a perfect system, but that's how it works. Uh, uh, then our, our base state aid per pupil number went from $3,838 to $3,852. Uh, it's not all about base state aid, you'll hear, but it is. That's how we set that. You know, the weightings matter. A lot of money comes into our budget from the weightings, but it's all based on that. The increase is less than half a percent. So we take our full-time equivalency, our FTE, our enrollment count, time base state aid, get our general fund budget about 2.7 million. I estimated this high, so we don't have to republish. Um, I estimated high the last two years, that just wasn't high enough. So I estimate high and hope we have to republish because we have a lot more kids than I expected. So this is probably higher uh, than the last two years that I anticipated. Uh, I do think we'll see a small drop in enrollment, although I've heard of a few new kids that I didn't know about a week ago that, that are coming into the district. So, 
uh, based on what I knew two weeks ago, uh, I thought we'd be down just a little. But uh, we have the three-year average for enrollment, uh, so we can use last year's number, this year's number, or the average of the last three years. So if we have a big drop, it's not going to hurt our budget right away. So even if we do see a drop, we'll get to use last year's enrollment numbers. So. Our funding reduction with the changes in state law, the way they fund the at-risk students, uh, we'll see a drop of about 30000 uh, Previously, uh, I thought that was about 19000 uh, When we actually did the math and uh, looked at our real budget, um, it was more like 30000 uh, The increase of about 0 0.7 mills is equal to that drop in state funding. So if you want to equate it to that, uh, any mill of the increase equates to about that. Uh, this is new. Uh, I think maybe I've mentioned it to you in a Friday email about the local effort. We collect 20 mills from our taxpayers. That money goes to the county clerk and then it's paid to us. Now, that money is going to go to the state. So instead of coming directly to the district, we'll, we'll, taxpayers will give it to the county, then it will go to the state, and it will come to us monthly rather than having a big check in uh, January and then another one in June. Is that right? Uh, and then a few smaller ones here and there. Which for us right now isn't that big of a deal. We don't get a lot of interest. Uh, we make nothing for interest now. Uh, probably not a big deal for the bank. Uh, it's sometimes even more of a headache for the banks because they have to, they have to cover all that. Uh, so, but if, insurance, or if interest rates were higher, it might be a big deal for us. Uh, why would they do this? Well, they can take all this money and show it as general state aid. So right now we show local effort of $850,000 and then the rest of that is state aid. Well, if the state is taking that now and then paying, to, paying it to us as general state aid, they'll actually show it in, this, in the state about $570 million more in state aid than they provided in the past year. And no dollar amount different, but I promise you, you'll hear this from, from politicians, how much more they're providing in state aid. It's going to happen, I promise you. Uh, how does that affect us? It's not that big a deal now. Cash flow, we're going to have to be very careful. I don't know how that's going to work out now. So cash flow wise, it could cause us some problems. We'll just have to babysit that a little more. Uh, our local option budget, uh, again, is the supplemental general fund. It's the same thing. <coughs> Maximum is 31% of the general fund. <coughs> we can set that at 33%, and I recommend we do that. Uh, we would have to have an election to maintain that at 33%. Right now, I don't think we'll need to do that in future years. Um, if we can continue to spend money from our capital outlay fund on other things, some operational expenditures, this won't be necessary. This year, I think it's important that we do that. We budgeted it. A million five, that's about a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand dollars more than last year. It's not quite 33 uh, percent. And we saw the mill levy earlier. If we went the full 33 percent, it'd be about another twenty four thousand dollars in our budget, but it would also add another six tenths of the mill. Some things to consider about this budget if we count the lost funding. Um, in our general fund, additional special education costs, uh, added salary costs between raises and uh, aid position, that, all that totals about 110000 in the negative. Between lost funding and added costs. Recall that we cut one position. Uh, Mrs. Russell is moving over to take Mr. Cooper's place. We won't replace Mr. Cooper's salary. So that's about it. Uh, all selling costs is about 50000 So the net there is about $60,000 loss. In our local option budget, if we increase that, <clears throat> $100,000, those two together give us a positive of about $40,000. Uh, 
Uh, that's going to cover other increased costs, uh, food, fuel, all of those things that go up every year. Uh, also consider that downward trend that we've had. This isn't just gravy in our budget. Uh, this will go a long ways to help us turn that negative trend around. Our capital outlay, uh, facilities, vehicles, equipment, we all know that. Uh, we can use it for building maintenance and equipment maintenance, meaning uh, custodial salaries as part of building maintenance. Uh, we can also use it for uh, vehicle maintenance, our buses, uh, to maintain our buses, not fuel, um, some uh, uniforms, uh, some uh, software costs, some of those things. Our resolution that we passed in May allows up to eight mills. Uh, we never need to reauthorize that. So typically we'd have to remember to do that every five years. Uh, we don't have to worry about that now. And again, the eight mills is a maximum. So the recommendation for this budget is not to use the maximum. Set that at six and a half. We use that to pay our lease purchase payment. Um, I, I would. My goal is to have a year's worth of that payment in the bank to make sure we can make that payment every year and not have to worry about anything else. So whatever uh, cash balance we think we need to maintain to be safe, we're going to add that payment to that and uh, make sure we, we can cover that payment. Uh, also consider future needs with our capital outlay, uh, with our vehicles, uh, replacing our vehicle fleet, uh, technology purchases. Bond and interest fund, we no longer levy a tax. We did not last year. Uh, we paid that off last year. There's a cash balance of about $48,000. There'll be some residual taxes coming in um, from uh, late, late payments and things like that. Uh, so we'll end up with fifty to 60000 in there at year end. Uh, we can transfer that money to the capital outlay fund, or we can use it for uh, seed money for a new bond. And I learned last week that we may be able to transfer that to other funds as well, uh, which would be very helpful with our cash balance situation. So we're going to leave that for a year. We're not going to mess with it. It's going to sit there and collect those residual taxes, and we'll, we'll take care of that next year. On our the different funds, uh, nearly all of our funds flow through the general fund and the supplemental general. They go into those two big pots, and then out of there, they go to those other funds. We transfer money from those funds to bilingual fund, from there to special education, from there to vocational, and then we spend it out of there. So our transfers count as expenditures on page two of that, uh, your budget document. Somewhere right in the middle of the page, total USD expenditures and then less transfers. Less transfers, that's why that's included there. So we transfer that money out of those funds. It shows it as an expense. So if they didn't do that, we'd be doubling up on expenses. We transfer $10,000 from the general fund to the bilingual fund. It would show as an expense in the general fund and as the bilingual fund. So that's why they take that out. Uh, budget authority is overestimated on, on pretty much all of those funds. Capital outlay is a great example. We don't expect to spend all of that money in our capital outlay fund. That zeroes out that balance. Food service, same thing. We don't expect to spend that much more than we did last year. But again, we have to have budgeted it to have the authority to spend it. So people may ask, why are you going to spend that much in capital outlay this year? We're not going to. We have to budget it so we have the authority to do that. The uh, USD budget information document, you have a copy of that. Uh, it's not updated for this budget yet. Um, but that's the uh, I don't know, 15, 16 page document that you have uh, that shows all the funds. Uh, that'll be updated here over the next month. Um, we do have a lot of information from the public. Notice of hearing is what you have there. All right. On your uh, Adobe Reader, on your documents there, 
you have these here. Uh, budget one page summary. That's the other printed document that you have there. State law requires that we provide the board with that. We have to have that at every board meeting where we're talking about budget. I don't know that there's been a bu uh, board meeting that we haven't talked about budget. <laughs> we always approve expenditures and that's part of our budget. So uh, it'll be up there. Uh, I think the, the, one, the document that I provide you uh, gives better explanations than, than this. The trouble with this is re remember that a lot of these funds are overestimated on expenditures. I don't expect to spend all that money. So on, on this, for this year, the green bars, it shows higher expenditures. Like for instruction. That's because we overestimate. So it's hard to tell. It, it does provide good information for the last couple of years. And uh, the mill levy, uh, some of those things. So there's some decent information there. Other things we have, the cash balances, that'll be on our website. This will be on our website. Uh, this is what we reported to the state. Uh, our budget at a glance shows a lot of these graphs and a lot of different information. And again, it's based on those overestimated numbers. So a lot of the things don't really fit when you're looking at budget. If you're looking at the last couple of years, it makes more sense. Uh, our budget form 150. This will be on our website. Uh, don't feel like you have to answer all of the public's questions because uh, there's a lot of information here. A lot of this is just required by law. Um, I don't have a problem providing it. Uh, it's, all, it's all open. Uh, it's pretty complicated. This is how they figure our full-time equivalency, our FTE, counting our students, how much uh, how many students we get to count extra because of our vocational programs and those things. So this would be on our website. This is very interesting to read if you ever want to, <laughs> to see it. So lots of information for the public. What questions do you have on our budget? concerns. I think it's important to keep the dollars ready constant year to year. Not having big swings. So I think the last two years have been pretty good as far as being constant. Yeah, I'm starting to The uh, LOB, you know, at 33%, we're going to probably have some questions about that. We are going to 33% LOB, but we're reducing the mill levy one and a half for capital outlay also. Um, actually, we're increasing the overall mill levy 0.7, even though the valuation is higher. Why only one year at 33 percent? You said that. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to continue to do that to drop the capital outlay and raise the local option budget if we have to uh, take it to a vote. Uh, there's a lot of there was a lot of misinformation about about that anyway. That we're just raising taxes by doing that. Uh, I I. I believe it would stir up more of that, uh, the effort and cost to go through that, to have another election, uh, when we can just maintain our capital outlay mill levy and spend more money out of there than we do other places. So rather than reduce our capital outlay and raise our local option budget, let's just transfer some of those expenditures to the capital outlay fund. And maintain a lower local option budget, if that makes sense. Take the same amount of money anyways. Uh, but it's kind of not the same. I was just wondering then, uh, why do it for one year? I don't have a problem. But yeah. I just, 
we haven't we haven't moved expenses over to capital outlay fund and I'd rather not until we have to once we do that once we start spending money out of capital outlay for the sick custodial salaries uh, and then we fill in the other areas of our budget with something else uh, we're stuck there unless we make cuts to shift things around so if we can get by another year without shifting those expenses over, I think we should do that. In the information I had out about the local option budget, um, uh, I did mention that you know that 33 percent was an option. So when we're voting for 31 percent, uh, the board has the authority to go up to 33 percent. And. Uh, and I think it's important that we do maintain a fairly flat mill levy uh, and fairly flat tax levy. Uh, I think that's that's important. I think the public uh, appreciates consistency. You know, I know how much you're going to be taxed. I know I did. So, if we can keep it mm -hmm. constant. But any increase this year from what I'm getting from you is just to cover a shortfall from the state. That mill levy increase of you know, 0.7 that equates to about 30 to 35,000, and that's how much will be short from state funding. Okay. And uh, go back to that one page on the presentation where it's and there's really a $40,000 difference there that we'll use to cover it at other added costs uh, and uh, make up some of our yearly budget shortfall that we've had. So again, it's not, uh, it's not gravy. It's not, uh, it's not excess. I think something that it should be more out in the public and getting them informed is the fact that the state took the local money and our if you think what is there over about 350 districts in kansas 286 and they're getting all the money from all those districts mm -hmm. and they're getting interest off of all that money but they're only sending us back the money that they got from us and using the interest for themselves. And I think that's wrong, and I think the public ought to be getting after our state legislators for doing that. That's not right. Most of them don't even know. That's what I mean. I think we they need to make public aware. Yeah. No, I mean that most of the legislators don't know. They didn't know? No. How did they get by with that? The, the same way they plugged in a lot of other things into that, that bill. Was, uh, plug them in at the middle of the night and really you don't have to talk about it. And they do things like that there? <laughs> at the yes. same time, I only thought national a little bit. But I, I, I do think people need to start calling their legislators and saying, you know, you're using our money and getting interest off of our money. No, we might not get as much interest off our banks, but they're getting it off of, what you say, 260-some districts of the year. I think they're going to need that money to use it for a little bit. But they don't have the right. <laughs> not to mention it's going to be difficult on our administrators to, they're going to have to carefully plan the year out that they don't spend too much too quickly because the state is just spin feeding it back to And that's us not right either. Rather than us having it all and use it whenever we need to. In other words, they're making decisions for us on how to spend our money locally. Right. And that is not right. A great the example. Somebody needs to know that. A great example with our cash flows, you know, we set up this, uh, our lease purchase payment on February on purpose because we get a large tax check in January we want to make sure we don't have a large payment, we don't have a large exodus of cash before we get that big tax check. Well, it doesn't matter now because, well, it does because we still get local option budget dollars and capital outlay dollars, but uh, a good chunk of that is our general fund dollars. And who's to say they'll actually give it back? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
it, you know, it is a big deal. It yeah, it is a very big deal, and I think the state of Kansas needs to know that our public education is taken out of our local hands now, and it's in the government hands. So, is that Sam, Brand Sam Brownback that kind of pushed us through? Or? I don't know who uh, added that to the budget bill. There was very little discussion on it. Obviously. It K, really, KSB pays, it was very it. close attention to those things, and it kind of slipped under their radar until it was all over. That's surprising. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not right. There's a name for that. It will be public. <laughs> it will be very public when they talk about how much more money they're providing for schools. But they're not going to tell the truth. <laughs> right. To give us our own money back. Okay. I hope we get our own money back. Okay. I thought you explained it very thoroughly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And not all that's on the website, so if anybody... I, it won't all be up there until we finalize the budget. Um, but I'll have all that information. Uh, what we'll That's do is know. the budget needs to be published for one week, and then there needs to be 10 days between uh, when it was published and when we hold the hearing. Uh, so uh, if, if this budget for publication is approved here, we'll send it to the paper this week, and then at our August meeting, uh, we will approve it, have the hearing and approve it. So. At that time, uh, we can make changes down, just not up. So. Well, thank you for working so hard at this. Can't be easy. It's a big part of what we do. Yes, it is. Um, any other questions for me? Well, you said you adjusted it high for the proposed budget, the 2.7. That's kind of, it's not as high as last year. We have, um, I don't know, there's probably $130,000 in uh, reimbursements this last year. Uh, our library funds come in and show as reimbursements. Uh, retirees that have health insurance on our plan, you know, we pay that for them and they pay us. So those dollars increase our budget. So this budget, our actual expenditures, would be, if we had the same amount of reimbursements, this would be, end up the year, about $100,000 higher than what we establish here. So anything that somebody else pays for, uh, what we pay on their behalf, just adds to the budget, if that, if that makes sense. So. Okay, so last year, where is it, say, $2.679? Yeah, yeah, roughly. It's what, it's what you... Yeah, our, our budget was... It was 2.6 2. 2. something, I can't yeah. remember. <coughs> I mean, 2.649 is where it was finalized. Budget. It's on the cash... Um, oh, just kind of warning, you said you know, we're doing it, and then yeah. it's in upper where it's not more. Yeah, yeah. So, so some of these, really general fund, we have a lot of reimbursements, uh, depending on what's going on. Capital outlay, we'll have some reimbursements with our basketball goals, and, uh, uh, the scoreboards is another one. Uh, and those things just increase the budget. Uh, it don't really cost us more. So it shows higher expenditures. Mm -hmm. So general fund will always be about $100,000 higher than we budgeted uh, due to insurance. Is there anything else that we get reimbursed for? There's, there's a, odds and ends kind of little things that we get as reimbursements. Um, the SDAC aid, and I'm, don't ask me what it is because I'm not entirely okay. sure. It's got something to do with Medicaid that okay. we get like quarterly. Okay, that's um, right. It's usually about six months in arrears a quarter that we're getting okay. for. Um, but the biggest chunk this year was the library and then we do a big chunk in retiree repayments for their health insurance, although two of those will be dropping off in the next two months, so that amount will decrease next year. 
Yeah. No, that's a good question. Though, you know, capital outlay is another area that I mentioned before. Uh, yeah, that's six hundred forty-nine thousand. Again, we don't expect to spend that uh, if we have a boiler blow up and uh, it's not covered by insurance and we need a lot of cash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, special ed's another area where we budget very high. Any other questions? I have a question on the 33%. Mm -hmm. Say we use it this year and then we let go back in a year or two, can we go back to 33? Or With an election. Okay, but this is just a one time deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 31 permanently. Yes, maximum. It doesn't always need to be at 31 percent. Uh, it can be even lower than that. Okay. Any other questions? So, do you think the public don't want to be at 33? I was that asking you on go to a regular election. Or? I think it doesn't. It's going to cost us two to three thousand dollars to go through a, a mail ballot election to stay at thirty-three. And uh, I guess let me stress that I, I'm not making a recommendation now. I'm looking ahead, thinking I don't think we're going to have to do, have an election to stay at thirty-three percent. If it if it's the same number of dollars in to maintain our capital outlay at eight, rather than stay at 33 on our LOB, you know, if it's a wash either way, let's just do without the election. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I'd entertain a motion to approve the resolution. Mr. President, I move the board approve resolution 2015-13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. Adjusted. Yeah. For the LOB as presented. Is there a second? Second the motion. So moved and seconded to approve resolution 2015-13 for the LOB as presented. Is there any discussion? Are all in favor aye? Aye. Opposed nay? Motion carries six and, and to be clear, this that motion and vote did not increase our mill every one bit. And that that's allowing us to do have more budget authority in our LOB compared to capital outlay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, publication of the budget. Any questions on the budget? So when you're talking about next year, the capital outlay will increase. Yeah, we'll increase. That, and we'll take back the LOB. If yeah, if if I had to make the budget now, I would make the capital outlay higher and the LOB lower. And that yeah. way, but since we're not going to be spending out of the capital outlay this year too for expenses, we'll do it next year. And I'll make it. So we don't need the LOB to be up higher. Yeah. And don't hold me to that. We'll see what happens with the budget. <laughs> All but but yes. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. That's what if I had to make a decision today, that's what we do. Yeah. Mr. President, I move the board approve the budget for publication as presented. Second. Then second to approve the budget for publication as presented. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Board of Education Districts. Discussion. Uh, this is something we've discussed uh, more than once. Uh, if this is something the board would like to move forward with, we need to make a decision on this by uh, October with an election coming up. Um, page 63 has the district uh, information.
shows the Board of Education districts. State law allows school districts to set up one of four ways. All the positions will be at large. Two districts, uh, you know, divided into two districts with three people in each. Uh, you know, three districts, two people from each district and one at large. That's what we have. Uh, or six different districts with one person from each district and then uh, one at large. So the board may choose to change how they see fit, but there are some time frames you need to stick with. We were, we're at the three districts? Yeah, the three districts. And then I guess it could be interpreted as six districts with one from each district, but really, for all intents and purposes, districts one and four are the same territory. And districts two and five are the exact same territories. So. I think we need to keep in mind next year we can have four board members potentially go off if they choose to not run again. And we got to consider last election we had three board members run unopposed. Makes me wonder if there is the, if we might have trouble finding people to run. If we restrict them to districts. I speak up, Barb. Me, I do. You know, I, I, I putting all personal things aside, but I still think that we need to continue some districts. Kind of goes back to the American, you know, taxation without representation. We have a lot of strong taxes coming in from both ends of the county. So I think that they still need to have their districts. And I think we've got a lot of new, capable, young families moving back into our communities that, that are going to be willing to run. And I feel if, if we don't have people that want to be part of our board, that maybe that's our fault in portraying that this is a, you know, to me, being on a school board should be an honor in your community. Because it's probably one of the highest boards. You're educating the kids of your county and your families and the people that you hope are coming back. And, you know, if we can't stand up and say, hey, this is the board you want to be part of, then I think we're lacking. But what if we have two people standing up in the same district? Competition. And no one in the other district. I, I just think that we just need that representation to continue it. If it's not broken, why fix it? You know, so far it's worked. I don't know. Three unopposed races is not. How long working. ago was that? Last year. Last year. Well, it's I, pretty much always been that. Huh? As far as I. But if you put, if you start putting everybody at large, then eventually, maybe not. Maybe it could be a popularity contest instead of a who could be the best person for the board. I think that would be the ultimate. Competition is all at large. Maybe, but um, I think we need districts, huh? Did you ever anybody run against you? No, but that was eight years ago. Um, well, last, four years ago. Last year. Yeah. I had anybody run against me. Either. But what's I mean, what's uh, wrong well, with that either? Well, you know. I don't know. They might not want to run against you. They might be your good friend, and they don't want to run against you, but they they would be a great board member. But wouldn't they still be running against you know, yeah. with all of ours? Yeah. You're still running, You're still against, still running against your friends. Well, it would be open, though. There would be no... I know, but it's the top three or the It'd top... Yeah, it's easy, but that, why are we making it easy? 
we should be showing our kids that this is part of government. This is what America was based on. Well, I would think at large it would be harder. Because you're going against everyone. When uh, It's pretty easy to get a gang together for an agenda issue instead of for an education issue, if you do it that way too. I don't agree with that. There would be no gangs. Chance. Not now, but maybe later. Uh, it's happened in districts. When, when I started, I basically had the same question, and uh, uh, it was explained to me that uh, um, part of it is the way I understood it when Hudson came part of, joined with St. John, <coughs> that they wanted to make sure that someone from Hudson, that area, had a chance to uh, be represented and it not be all St. John people. Yeah. And so with districts was how that was uh, going to be more apt to happen <coughs> because Hudson is the town for that district and then you, we have all the country folk basically for the rest of it. There could be seven so people from Hudson. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't think it's a Hudson and St. John deal. Oh, I, think it's a, I think it's a community deal where the seven best should be on the board. It's not worth fighting, but we, I think it's worth discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to discuss it, but I'm also going to stand up for the people that have spoke to me about this mm -hmm. and feel that they feel it should stay the same unless it gets to the point where you absolutely can't find anybody. And I know some very capable families up there that are going to be willing to run and are excited about being on the board and have kids that are coming through here. What about, uh, if you have two options, I guess, keep it the same or change, what, uh, I guess for purposes of discussion, what would be some pros and cons for keeping it the same. That's what we've been talking about. Yeah, you know, yeah. just list them. Um, I, the pros would be equal representation. And I'm not talking about just our area, but south of here, too. They're close to Pratt. They could very easily take their kids to Pratt if they feel like that their kids are not being represented in our school. Same way with the North. They could very easily take them to Great Bend if they feel that their family's not being heard in the school district. I don't care where you're at. We've already had family that live next door to St. John that's taking their kids to Maxville. We have families in Hudson that are taking their kids to Stafford. You can go wherever you want to go, but your representation is important. There's nobody, nobody lives south of St. John or west of St. John or east of St. John. It's on the board. Well, no, that's what I was wondering. Who's District 3 and 6 in here? Right here. Well, that's because they drew the lines a couple of years ago when Kevin was on here and uh, redrew the lines. So, you wouldn't have been on here then? I, I just think they are in the history. You're, you're all on the same team. Well, it's a population thing when they readjust it. Right, 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 right. Yeah. They have to ever. 10 years or something with the census mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, it needs to be within 5%. Yeah, yeah. So they had to adjust the lines in town a little bit. This is both for the and there's in families with them. Well, you two, and yeah. you two are the district <laughs> no, Well, you know, you're, you're, the, you're the... I just think there's not that many people want the job. Okay. But like I say, is that our fault for not being a promoter of this is your kid's education we're talking about here? Well, I don't think it's our fault. Well, I'm not saying our fault, but wouldn't, shouldn't we instead of going out and asking them, don't you want to be on the board, blah, 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 this is the advantages. We have a great superintendent, Bob. Mm -hmm. Instead of going, oh, uh, not the board. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm just, I, I just don't see that change is necessary. And many people I have talked to me and feel the same way. 
And so I'm voicing from many. I am trying to keep my personal eye here, so I'm voicing from many. Okay. It was important that the, when this was set up that Hudson had um, representation. You agree? Mm -hmm. I don't think we're arguing against that at all. We want the best representation for the district. There might be three people from that some Yeah, there might be. Great. And there's three opportunities. Him and at large and myself, so Well the first three time of them. I got on the board I was at a large, at large position. Mm -hmm. There was two from Hudson plus So I don't think that'd be any trouble. I mean Barbara if your kids would run they'd get on. So I think it that's is. not what I'm talking about. I'm just, I'm talking of the way it's set up. Whoever runs has that opportunity of representing their area. It's a representation that I, you know, tax of those taxpayers within that district. So. I was just looking at the last election where we had three unopposed, and it, I was just thinking, gosh, does anyone else want to? Well, I think there's going to be several years that they've been unopposed. I can't remember very many that we even had. I mean, I ran unopposed. There's been quite a bit of that lately. And you don't think that's an all right thing? No. no. <laughs> Why? What if you get a bad, bad one? What if there's a bad candidate and don't be around against them? Well, I guess that should be that people need to go out and find well, somebody to run against them. Seven board members too. Huh? For, so that's why you got seven board members too. Yeah. Okay. yeah, one person can't change the battle. Yeah. And I think representing different areas and different community keeps things from being an agenda item. I'm coming on the board for a purpose. Purpose should be for our students for education, for our community. It shouldn't be for, okay, I'm mad at somebody and I'm going to get them off. And that doesn't have anything to do with where they live. Yeah, but if you have a lot of people from one area with the same agenda, it could. Not saying that it does happen, but it's a possibility. It's always a possibility. Government's set up with representation of the taxpayers. They have ASCS, economic development. Everybody tries to get that group so everybody is able to speak in their area. Josh, we've had our school districts that are all at large. Are you hear any complaints or any issues of such? Or? No, I, nothing that I know of specifically because of that. No, I, I can get numbers for you on how districts are set up. I'm curious because I tried to look at this to find out the districts that are consolidated, how it's set up versus the districts that just have a single community that's in their school district. And I couldn't, I didn't know where to look. I didn't have the right connections, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, you think about consolidation, it's got to be set up different because of that representation of the different communities. Mm -hmm. You know, I know Stafford's at large, but it's basically one community. <coughs> yeah. well, there you've got the different board members from yeah. the different communities. Yeah, I think it would all come down to when the consolidation happened, because really, you know, every school district in the state nearly has consolidated at some point. Uh, how recent the consolidation was. I bet you they're still staying that. strong. So. It'll take time. But, you know, in our situation, St. John Hudson, it happened in what, the early mid-70s? 
I don't feel there's a line there. It's, we're just all one. I'm not saying there's a line. I'm speaking. It's all one school district. I don't, you guys, I don't know if you're getting me wrong. I'm just saying that representation is important in the districts. North, south, east, west, in the middle. Everybody pays taxes. There's strong taxpayers in the south. No, well, it's easier to talk to. I mean, like, there's people up there in our area where they talk to me because I might see them on a daily basis or something. Or, say, like, you guys will never see them. And you wouldn't know what, was, what they thought about stuff up there in that district. So, so I mean, I can, you know. Well, I know a couple. Not everybody's going to call you. I mean, if they just see you or something, they might say, hey, you know. A couple of years ago, it was brought up about the buses maybe paying, mm -hmm. not having the buses and paying parents to come. Speaking for the Hudson people, I said, that will, you know, I know people up there will not get, up, get the kids in the car and bring them down here even if they get a paycheck. Would you guys know that? So the thing is, is the fact that I was speaking for our district up there and the fact that this probably would not work at this situation because A, we've got to provide education for those kids. They're in our district. You know, if you don't have the bus to get them down here and the parents don't get them down here and they test poorly and blah, 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 it's just going to be a domino effect on USD 350 or any of, the, any of the areas that you have to bus them in. So it's just little things like that that, you know, if you're not associated with it, you might not think about it. So... That's just one example, but it could be in a different district. I'm just using that particular district. So you're in favor of districts? I'm in favor of staying the same. <laughs> <laughs> and I will vote that way until the very end. So. Okay. All right. Hold on. I'm in favor of that. What, what are our options? Is it all at large or three districts? No. You can do two districts. You can do six districts. Oh. So you could split that into you know, just just two areas. You know, again, population needs to be equal. Uh, within five percent, six districts would be nearly impossible, I think. And we need to make a decision by October if there were any change. Yeah. Okay. I was just trying to, my point of view is just thinking of ways for us to promote our district broad, more wide. And to me, that's open it up. But there's other views too. So. so you're saying that if you opened it up at large and four people go off and four people are the only ones that sign up, you're no different than what you are right now. In that scenario, that's correct. Which, so what's well, the difference? So that's the way all the elections have pretty much been then. So it wouldn't change anything. No, it wouldn't change. In that scenario, that there might be seven people running for the Well, and there might be seven people running for the districts, too. You can argue both, both ways. Yeah, so There's two sides. Yeah. I'll just point that out. I am, too. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I got a question. Is After this discussion, is this going to be brought up again? For October, September, or what's what's your idea? Well, I think we should vote. Is 
It's just my thought, but I'm just one person. That's not an action item tonight, right? No. Can I make this recommendation? We can put it on uh, the agenda for next month and uh, uh, take a vote on whether we want to pursue something uh, and direct me to either look at changing what is it going to take to do that or uh, forget about it for a while. That's really what the vote would be next month. Well, if you went to two districts, how would that be split? Do you have any idea? No. So it'd be three and three and one at large on the two district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you did, I mean, if you did north and south, street. it would be, you know, in here somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you did east and west, I don't know where the line would be, but I don't, I don't know. There's, there's three. In each district, and uh, two selected one election time, and one the other, and the other. And then at large, somewhere else, yeah. yeah. It'd still be you have three come up and four come up. That would be the same as what we got. Because yeah. you're going to have one run or two run with your, or the one, one way of looking at it. Yeah, with three districts, you would have a time where there would be one person from one of those districts. So from what I've heard, the two choices is staying the same or all at large. So our rotation is three and four right now. Mm -hmm. I thought we had a one in there. Here, is it? Yes. Here's the expiration date there. Four is, four people is always one election and three is, is that So Barb and Bill, you guys are opposite, and, uh, and Chad and you Paul are the opposites. And then that at large just comes up every four years. Okay. Well, we could take a month and visit with our people in our community. So what the community wants to do. That's what we should do. <laughs> yeah. Really? I'm in favor of that. Well I see the first time I was on I was at at large position. Mm -hmm. How'd you get switched? Because I didn't think anybody was going to run from Hudson to be on the board. Because Carol went on. So I thought. Well, I thought Tom took Carol's place. No, he took my place. I took yeah. Carol's place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why. Did I you took, ask anybody? Well, nobody went up to. Did you ask what? See, they want to run. Bill well, did. I don't no want. To I went up to the courthouse about <laughs> uh, the deadline to see if anybody was running. Nobody was running, so I thought, well, I can do another four years. Yeah. And I told him, well. You know, I'll change and take Carol's, and then the whole community yeah. can get in that large. Surely somebody yeah. else will yeah. Yeah. do in that large position. So that's well, I must admit, you know, know that was that was my situation too. I stood there and waited until the time. But I think about all the families that have moved into the community, and several of them have already talked to me about wanting to be on the board at some time or another. So, yeah. <laughs> so, but, but so there's your point, Barb. Huh? There, Bill, there's a great point Bill, you just made about being at large. But Bill won an at large. So I, I think this Hudson St. John deal is, is hogwash. I think it's a, a week. No, it's no, not it's not Hudson and St. John. It's just that I'm representing Hudson. If I was in the south part, and representing those people, I'd be saying the same thing. Well, I'm representing the people that have visited with me about the thing that it, if it's not broken, why try to fix it? They like it. It's worked well. I don't care if I was in Timbuktu. I would be representing the people from Timbuktu. 
Don't use it as a Hudson St. John issue. We well, appreciate your passion. Yeah. I am very yeah. passionate yeah. about yeah. Yeah. But that. That's, but my point is the bill won the election at large, so. I was a little wonder on that large position. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the point. Every we, time we I'm around, people. there ain't nobody. Yeah, we do need people, but even though you you have tons of people, what if you have 30 people, you're only going to get four that are going to be on there. So, what's the difference between the four that sign up for a position or the four that get the top votes? That's where it turns into... Well, as long as you Who's know there's the people friends? over there that want to be on the school board, I am fine with believing it works out. But if not, we need to do something different. Okay. So he Wait a minute. So my direction, so we'll put this on the agenda for next time, and the, the vote would be do something different, and I'll do the research from there, or we're going to stay the same and we don't worry about it. In the meantime, let's visit with the community. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. Um, let's get an ad as a good item. What was that, Josh? Uh, for shared staff agreements. We, uh, we have an agreement with uh, Stafford to uh, share co salary cost uh, in services of uh, Kim Volker and uh, Rita Suter. Um, we pay mileage uh, to Mrs. Volker to come over and we pay half of the salary cost. That uh, is $30,198. And uh, they pay half of the total salary costs uh, for uh, Spanish teacher and that's $26,646. So I get a motion to approve those shared staff agreements with USD 349. Mr. President, I move mean, we um, agree to the agreement, accept the agreement from shared uh, teaching positions with USD 349. Second. We have seconded to continue the shared staff agreement with uh, USD 349, Rita Suter and Tim Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. 6 0. Communications, board member activities. Start over here, Carl. You didn't have it. Bill, nothing. Carl. I miss the scholarship thing. I took a tour of the school. Looks good. Oh yeah, I took a tour of the school too. <laughs> Fancy. Stand on. Um, I attended the South Central Education Board meeting. We passed our budget. Mr. Um, Olive. Seacrest was a superintendent at Lyons for several years. He works with KSB now. He'll be coming out to do that goal setting with us. Uh, I do have a question for the board. We want to start that meeting at six. Uh, we'll have you know a significant time there, you know, at least an hour with him, uh, and then our regular board meeting stuff. The agenda is not really packed with a lot of discussion items. Uh, I know. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it that may be. Is the August meeting? Yes, then for the August meeting. So if we would be okay with it, I guess, let me rephrase that. I would suggest we start that at 6, if uh, everybody would be okay with that. Uh, and 
Yeah. What date is that? August. I'll try. A little early for you. Tonight was. <laughs> well, and I'm okay with starting at seven. It's just weather. Getting not either. I'm okay with starting at seven. I'm just trying to keep everybody's interest in mind getting out of here in a decent hour. But I'll turn the system off. So I can be later. I'll be here when I get here, Bill. That's kind of should be debatable, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. start with that too. Six o'clock. Yeah. Okay. What day? Good. August so, 11th. Second. Second. Okay. So we'll change that. We'll do our budget here in the first on there. So if you're not going to be able to make it, you have input on that. We'll do that first. Um, uh, state assessment results. Uh, they will not be releasing the state assessment results. Publicly or to us, uh, which is very disappointing. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I don't want to say we just went through the motion, but we did a little more than that because uh, we wanted to see some data from that and how we're doing on our curriculum and uh, moving toward that. But there were so many problems, so many issues, and uh, uh, every, all of the Common Core stuff being so political, uh, they're, they're not going to release the results. There were so many technical problems. The results aren't valid, it's bad data, but I still wanted to see it and be able to make those decisions for ourselves. Uh, you know, if, it's, if it's bad scores, then yeah, it's bad data. If it's really good, then hey, we did great. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. We won't see those results. Uh, so that's disappointing. Uh, our construction is progressing along nicely. Um, uh, maybe a little behind schedule, but I think we're going to be done ahead of schedule. So things that have been ordered and things that need to get done, I think we're in really good shape. I've been very pleased with our contractor. Uh, he does a pretty good job. So we're moved over into the new office area. We still have to put a base trim in, and uh, we just needed to get out of that office so they can get, get to working on that area so they can get done. Uh, there needs to be doors put on. Uh, so face plates for network and phone cables and finishing touches like that but, but we're moved over uh, not quite settled in yet but it's going to be a good a good setup uh, this isn't uh, an elaborate fancy space for the new superintendent is for the time you can come come see the uh, humble space we now live in but, uh, but it, it's going to be a good setup that that entryway that will have new doors there funnel all the traffic through uh, the office. It's what needs to happen. So uh, it's a good setup. We need a sign. Yes. We'll be getting some signs around uh, directing traffic. You know, some things that we probably need for a while. Landscaping uh, around the sign. Eventually. <laughs> a step at a time. Uh, it's going to be a mad dash to get everything done, get it cleaned up, and get folks in. So. Uh, the building or the restrooms at the east end of the building, uh, they grouted that tile today, uh, waiting on windows to come in. So, uh, you know, little things like that kind of hold up progress. But uh, uh, that's ready for the flooring to be poured and fixtures to be hung. Uh, and the ceiling grid, I think, is coming in this week. Uh, the restrooms at the west end of the elementary, uh, I think they're cleaned up, ready for tile now. Uh, they should be done with that tile this week. They move pretty quick. Uh, the restrooms at the high school area, they've torn down all the district office. Uh, they poured concrete today, I think, uh, for the uh, plumbing. So it's ready for the block layers to come in and uh, put those walls in for the uh, plumbing. I take that back. The plumbing needs to come in and they'll, they'll put the block in probably this week. So they should have some structure up there this week. That area where the outer office was over there will be a janitor's closet. Uh, so we won't have to have that trash can in the hallway. There's a mop sink in there. And then Julianne's old office we'll use for storage. We'll still have access to that vault for student records and some things like that. The, the uh, classrooms down the old library where Mrs. Witt and Mrs. Hacker's room are, Rooms are they haven't done anything yet there, so it shouldn't take very long. But I feel very confident they'll have that done. But 
Uh, we want to get them out of this side of the, uh, the elementary side of the building and then they'll, they'll knock those things out. The restroom, restrooms by the main gym, floors are poor. Uh, there's a little touch up to do and the, the radiator covers need to be cleaned up and uh, painted. Ceilings were painted. Uh, I think one of them today, in fact. Uh, so, new light fixtures to come in. I think all the uh, plumbing fixtures have been been hung. Uh, looks sharp. So, I can take you all over there and uh, take a look at it if we want to. Uh, if we take four or more, we've got to keep the meeting going. and. Uh, you're going to have to follow us around with the camera. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to take Julian with us and keep minutes until we're done with that. But, uh, so I'm glad to take anybody over there that wants to go. Um, any questions on the progress of the construction? Yeah. Are you happy? I am happy. Yeah. Yeah. I wish uh, I wish we could have moved into a hundred percent finished space, but. It wasn't possible. It's going to be we're going to be moving stuff to get things finished. And, uh, but again, we just we had to get out so they could get get rolling. So, uh, so the the doors at the, uh, the I call it the high school by the auditorium are they going to be locked in constantly? No, they'll be open first thing in the morning. So traffic wise, where we drop kids off will remain the same. You know, the electronic doors, we can keep those unlocked until 8 o'clock and then they'll lock. So the buses can drop kids off there, parents can drop kids off there, uh, they'll unlock right after school so parents can, uh, or you know, kids can wait over there. Uh, in the morning? Yeah, to watch. No. See who comes in or out. Uh, you know, uh, we've got people in the gym uh, right there, uh, but nobody no outside. No one. No. Feel at least, I mean, they'll have to be outside, they can be standing inside. But yeah, and we have a teacher or something there to know who's going in and out. And we haven't had that in the past. Yeah. We have the office there, well, of course, there but, there, yeah. but it wasn't something that we paid attention to who's coming in and out. Yeah. We've well, got to, and we've got other doors that are unlocked, you know, to let people in the building, mm -hmm. like at the east end of the elementary. Uh, and we unlock those doors first thing in the morning, so. You know, if it's real cold, the kids don't have to walk all the way down to the other end of the elementary just to get in an open door. So if a high school student goes to the library, are they going to have the ability to come in through the, by the superintendent's <coughs> elementary office mm -hmm. and go through the yeah, hallway? Yeah, that's what will have to happen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. As long as they're reminded so they don't come around there and find them for so long. Yeah, well, they can get out, they just can't. <coughs> that's what I mean when they try and get back in. <coughs> uh, roofing maintenance, uh, we need to continue with that, but I, I budgeted about 15000 for uh, roof maintenance for this summer. Um, we do still have some <coughs> leaks, and we'll continue to have leaks. Uh, uh, so we do need to uh, update some of those things. I've got a report from our roof consultant. Uh, I'll send you that here in the next couple of weeks so you can see that. So based on that, um, there's there's more improvements needed than what uh, I've budgeted, but I don't feel comfortable spending more than that. So uh, if the board's okay with that, I'll proceed with that. <coughs> with those That roof maintenance, I just want to let you know that's, that's coming. We'll continue to do that. Uh, we need to do some of that every year. It just needs to happen continue with that every year. Uh, technology maintenance and updates. Uh, we had to update our server. Mr. Smith you know, mentioned to me a few months ago that you know, we're going to need to replace that server soon and uh, it decided it wanted to be replaced before we decided to replace it. So we had a huge <coughs> and uh, you know, $9,000 for, for that. Uh, you know, those things aren't cheap but needed, and then some other things with uh, switches and uh, other equipment behind the scene that don't really get in the kids' hands, but uh, uh, things that are are, uh, are expensive. Where is this? <coughs> in the custodial closet at the east end of the elementary. 
We have one server that holds student files that's in Mr. Smith's room, and then the other one's in the custodial closet of Crescent's bathrooms at the East End Elementary. The capital outlay resolution, we did that back in May. Uh, we published that in the paper twice. And then there's a protest period of 90 days. That's, or is it 40? No, it's got to be 40. 40 days, I think. Uh, anyway, that protest period is over. Nobody has protested it. There won't be an election for that. So uh, that will continue on forever now. Uh, Safe Routes to Schools grant, we discussed that uh, in a recent meeting. Uh, upgrading some sidewalks, and there would be uh, grant money involved with that. We would likely have to share some of that cost. Uh, the city made the decision they did not want to pursue that. Uh, the engineering costs and some of those things are just too high. We can uh, take care of those things without without all of that. So, so anyway, that's off the table now. Um, I do have a board leadership workshop on Tuesday, August 5th. Thursday, August 7th. So if anybody would like to go to that, um, uh, Merlin and Stan and I went to that a couple of years ago, and Chad and I went so last year. Is that the one at year. Hayes, too? There's so one, one at Hayes and one at, at, uh, at Topeka. Uh, and really, anybody is invited. Uh, so if you want to look at the agenda, uh, there's good information there. Uh, if you'd like to go, I'd be glad to... It was good last year. It was, was, uh, it was good. <coughs> so. Are you on the ticket then? It would be uh, if anybody wants to go. Uh, need to schedule that. So. And that's. Uh, I have my report. We're, we're getting calendars together. I meant to bring you a copy. Our library is printing our calendars for us this year. Uh, we have had Taylor printing uh, print them. We're trying to reduce some of those costs and use the label we have here already and resources we have here already. So that'll save us some cost. But, uh, getting ready to print our back to school newsletter. So I'll send that to you when I have it before I send it out. Maybe the elementary principal can go help. Do that. I heard he needs something to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can stay one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Yep. <clears throat> we need an executive session. Yeah. Yep. For uh, I guess we can just do these in one motion. I should have put them. Uh, personnel and negotiations want to be connected. So, okay. I've got two different motions there, but uh, uh, negotiations may take. Um, I don't have a lot of personnel. Say ten minutes. Ten minutes. I get it done. Okay. motion. Mr. President, move the board to an executive session and discuss personal matters in order to protect privacy and all personnel with the board and Mr. Meyer and uh, to, 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 get, to discuss negotiations also for 10 minutes. All of it 10, ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Move second and go into executive session. The board, Mr. Meyer, for the purpose of uh, discussing non elected personnel and negotiations for 10 minutes. Is there any discussion? All there, Aye. 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 Motion carried 6 up. Open session. Entertain a motion to approve the teachers' negotiating agreement for the 2014 15 school year. Mr. President, I move the board approve the teacher negotiated agreement for the 2014-15 school year. <coughs> Move and seconded to approve the teacher's negotiated agreement for the 2014-15 school year as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Carried, six so. Uh, 
a motion for a pay increase of 1.9%. Mr. President, I move that we give a pay increase of 1.9%. To the classified staff. Um, to the classified staff in this church. Second. Moved and seconded to approve a pay increase of 1.9% for classified staff and administrators beginning July 1st. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. 6 0. Future agenda items. <coughs> uh, we'll have our board goal setting and uh, our budget hearing. Uh, staff handbooks, I'll bring those to you to approve. Uh, we've got some significant updates there. Uh, shared staff agreements, we just did that, so that's off the list for August. Uh, library budget, we'll need to do that. Our special ed assessments, we'll need to officially approve those, but it's a done deal. Uh, and KSB policies, I just heard from them today. They're, they should have their policy audit to us this month, so or next month. <coughs> Pretty good agenda there. Anything else come before the board? Motion for adjournment. I submit. Any second to adjourn? All favor, aye. 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 aye.